Welcome back to the gospel. We hope that you had an exhilarating sports weekend. There was so much going on that I, I hope you were able to keep up most of it. If you are following us on our Facebook group, keeping up with it wouldn't be quite as hard. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you go find us on Facebook at the gospel sports truth and also YouTube at the gospel stp again on youtube at the gospel stp i'm your jose the fantasy football fiend i got my guys with me the fantasy nostradamus young vanda holla at the people young van what's going on out there and my guy bk wins let me tell you why i call this man bk wins uh, for the first time yeah for, for probably ever um, I have now tripled my starting investment as it pertains to uh, putting a couple of shuckles down on these uh, numbers here. But BK Wins has had us in the money for like the last eight months now. So if you haven't caught on, even if you aren't putting anything down, you know, take a couple of little notes there, match it up with what happens over the weekend. And then, uh, you know, a little trial run. But BK, holla at the people. Hey y'all. All right, so this weekend, a whole lot went down in the NFL. We'll start there first, and then we will parlay our way, pardon the pun, on over to the NCAA. Steelers beat Baltimore yet again. Um, it's Some teams just have other teams' number, and it seems like that's the case here with the Steelers and Baltimore. Um, BK, why don't you start us off? Like, what did you see here? This is an 18 to 16 win, so low scoring. What happened? Yeah, so I think these games play, this played out typically how they have been. One score games. Um, in the last nine games now, the Ravens are one and eight against the Steelers. They're all one score games. Obviously, Lamar now one and four against the Steelers. He missed the others due to injury, which is why he's one and four versus one and eight. But I think the telling thing for me is in order to beat the Steelers, you're going to have to find a way to score points. And against that defense, it's really, really tough to do, um, especially with the pass rush that they're able to generate on quarterbacks. But look, Lamar, 16 of 33, I threw, he barely hit 200 yards passing. That's not going to get it done against the Steelers. And I know it was close and they had a chance and Tucker missed a field goal and he's the best kicker in NFL history. So, you know, could have, would have, but the Steelers find a way to beat their division rivals. It happened again, and now they're in the driver's seat in the AFC North. Uh, just two Damn, words. How did it about your cousin? Justin Tucker. I mean, you said it. Not only he missed one field goal, he missed two field goals. Um, so, you know, at one point, this dude used to be Mr. Automatic. You know, you rolled him out, you know it was three points. Um, this year has been pretty tricky with these kickers, and and he has missed a few himself this year. So I hate to put all the blame on him solely, but he missed two field goals. Um, they play well enough to win. I mean, that's all, I mean, these games, this division, these teams know each other. It's going to be a knockout, drag out type of fight anyway. And the Steelers, man, they just find a way to win. Is it is never pretty, it's never in style, but when the clock hits zero, they have the most points. Talking about a, another set of teams that really know each other uh, from many competitions in the last previous years, Buffalo takes out Kansas City. Their O is no more. There are any other undefeated teams in the NFL. Buffalo takes out Kansas City. Does this change our outlook as far as power rankings on the year? Are we looking at um, team, a couple of teams out there possibly being equal to or better than Kansas City at this point? Or in your humble opinions, does Kansas City still sit at the top of the heap? And this is just what has happened every single year other than 72 when Miami went uh, – <laughs> undefeated so that doesn't change your mind about kansas city like what's your thought process right now uh the way i view the the chiefs 
this year is the same way I view the uh, Miami Hurricanes. They've been just begging to get beat for weeks on weeks. I mean, they was undefeated, but they haven't been playing like one of these, you know, we're the best team in the league type of games. You know what I'm saying? I still think they should main, remain number one in the power rankings. I mean, due to not only the one loss, but being defending two-time champions. Um, but you got to beat these guys when they count. And that's one thing about Mahomes. He's not even playing well this year, and they only got one loss. It seemed like during the playoffs, he just finds a way to get it done. So I'm looking more forward to that. But these guys are supposed to lose a couple games uh, thus far, but they've been skating by, whether it was the refs or different things like that. So they finally uh, took one L for the season. Yeah, I think for me, um, they're still number one in the power rankings. They just lost their first game. They're the two-time defending champions. And the scary part is they've not played well throughout most of the year, and they finally took a loss. Like, imagine when they start clicking and they have a pattern towards the second half of the year, turning it up a notch when they know postseason. It's almost like, ho oh, hum, we're just going to sleep through the season, and then we'll find another gear. That's what they're doing. Um, but give Buffalo credit. Uh, Allen's now beaten Mahomes four times, just by far the most of any quarterback. Uh, something Lamar Jackson can't do that we've talked about a couple times. Um, you know, so he finds a way to get it done and beat them. Um, and also, I think it goes back to what I've been saying all year. While I never trust a McDermott Allen postseason run, you can count your dollar that they're going to be really good in the regular season. And they've been great so far this regular season. I, they only have two losses. They're right there. Um, and they have a stranglehold on the AFC. So um, give the Bills credit. They played really well yesterday or on Sunday. A game that didn't quite go the way I thought it was going to go. Um, I thought it was a more of a pick em, but it was a beat down. Denver beats Atlanta 38 to 8. Is this just one of those weeks you just throw away the tape? Is Denver this good? Is Atlanta this bad? Like, what do what are we doing? B BK, help us sort this out. Um, well, so this was probably the easiest bet I cashed all week. Um, I can't believe the Broncos were only laying two and a half at home against Atlanta. Um, the Broncos defense are a top five defense. Uh, they have a distinct home field advantage. Um, the mile high altitude is no joke to deal with. That defense is terrific. Now, look, no one thought that Bo Nix would have the game of his life um, by any means. But we've seen Kirk Cousins before, right? This is the kind of thing he does. They couldn't run the ball. He couldn't throw the ball. Um, and the truth is, while the records now show that they're even, Denver's a better team. They're a better team than Atlanta. It, not necessarily as much as it showed on Sunday, but the fact that that line was two and a half was crazy to me. Like, it almost seemed too good to be true because I don't know of anybody that thought Atlanta was going to be Denver. Uh, watching this game, man, it's just um, maybe Sean Payton was right out, you know, after all, right? He was saying he felt like he had the best quarterback. Um, and Bo Nix played pretty well. Like, um, he's he's growing, maturing in that offense. So I was pleasantly, presently surprised about that. I'm with BK on this one. I didn't uh, see the Falcons really hang with these guys again on the road. Uh, this defense is – top tier. Uh, they took the run game away. And then from that point, you know, you got Sertan. He's going to take your best receiver out the game. And at that point, it's, it's down here from there. So um, I think the pleasant surprise again uh, was Bo Nix uh, maturing. And, and I mean, he's looking like probably the second best quarterback this past draft at this point. So crazy. The Texans, <clears throat> I'm going to slide this one in here. The Texans beat the Cowboys 34 to 10. We know they're missing their starting quarterback. Um, the Texans were missing Will Allen. But there, there's just a lot going on with Dallas right now. 
my question for this one is a little bit more abstract. Will this season be bad enough that even Jerry Jones will have to humble himself and say maybe there's a better direction that we can take? Is, is it possible that this season is just bad enough that he'll say, you know what? I don't think Bill Belichick can do worse than Mike McCarthy. And I'll probably at least consult with him as far as who we're drafting and why. I say that because I saw a couple of rumors out there about um, Jerry being interested in hiring Belichick. His name and Mike Vabel's name are going to be hot commodities this offseason, supposedly. But that is one link that I've heard about. But just in general, whether it be Bill Belichick, whoever it may be, is, is it time for Jerry Jones to look at things a little bit differently? Uh, we saw there were empty seats, which you never see uh, at home in Dallas. A good bit of the fans that were in the stands were Houston fans. It, are we finally reaching the tipping point where America is upset with their favorite team? Man, listen, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> so, no, there's no be no change in Jerry Um, because he can go on a even starting like a new season. If he go on a three, four game winning streak, it's going to be how about them Cowboys? He's going to be on every radio station, his own his own show. And he's going to be going. They're going to Super Bowl. Right. Um, Michael Urban did come out today and said his sources, really good sources, said if the Dallas Cowboys was to draft Shador Sanders, that the daddy would come along. So that sounds like, and, and by him saying his sources and really good sources, that means it came from the horse, in my opinion, with them being so close. I just don't think Belichick can deal with the Jerry. Um, he's just too mentally. So those type of coaches, I don't think, can deal with that type of owner going from someone like Kraft, who just sits back and just, you know, let you do your thing versus somebody like Jerry that's going to be in the locker room with the guys and he's going to be all the practices and doing this. So I think, I don't think Bill Belichick will be an option there in Dallas. So for me, I think about it like this. Um, yes. Jerry Jones isn't going to change. The truth is McCarthy should have been fired three years ago. <laughs> um, and he's still there. The reason why he's there is because he's a yes man and will do whatever Jerry Jones says and let Jerry Jones get the spotlight. There is a 0% chance that Bill Belichick's going there for two reasons. One, Jerry Jones doesn't want to share the spotlight with Belichick. And two, Jerry Jones is certainly not going to give Belichick the full control and reins, which is what he would require. So there's no chance that's happening. Um, but the truth of the matter is, regardless of the coach, I've been saying this before the season, during the season, and again now. Look at the Cowboys offseason. They virtually did nothing. This is a team in a rebuild. They don't want to say it. They don't want to publicize it, but that's what it is. It's a team that lacks talent. Their quarterback can't win anything that matters. And they have two ridiculous contracts to Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. And the rest of that team, quite frankly, looks terrible. They've gotten really – they've regressed talent-wise in a hurry. And so, no, they're not going to change anything. He's going to run it back and continue to lose and smile and be him. I've got a quick question for you, BK. Um, you were speaking about Jerry and the spotlight, not being able to share it. Mm -hmm. That's – I mean, a guy like Prime, if Deion Sanders come to town, I mean, the light is extremely bright um, without him even trying to, you know, be in the spotlight. So what do you think how that would work? I mean, I think Jerry does like these former players, maybe like Jason Garrett was there, the coach, these guys that will allow him to meddle um, like Bill won't. So what do you think about that if Dion was to come? Um, I'm not going to say zero percent. But I'm going to say no better than 10% chance primetime comes to Dallas. 
for the same reason. Again, Dion brings cachet, swag, clout. It's going to be a circus. All the attention talk is going to be on him. Uh, if his son comes there too, even more so, there is no way that Jerry Jones's ego will allow him <laughs> to have anybody that is not a yes man. The reason why Garrett works is he's another McCarthy in the sense that he does whatever Jerry Jones wants. He's at his beck and call, which is totally within the playbook of Jerry Jones. These big personalities don't have a chance, I think, of going there because he won't allow it. He, 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 would rather be, he would rather his ego prevent this team from being great than having doing the right thing for the team. His star has to be the brightest, and that's a losing star. It's lost its luster. Seattle takes out San Fran, 20 to 17. Uh, this one was a little bit of a surprise for me. Is San Fran in a good enough position that they can string together enough wins that they may be able to make the playoffs? I know we're normally talking about how far they may be able to go in the playoffs, but the way things are looking right now, that several things are going to have to happen for them to be able to make the playoffs. Do we think that they can figure those things out? Um, obviously, CMC being back is a big part of that. It'll be his third game back um, coming up. So and they've been giving him a full complement of carries. I think he's gotten like 19 touches or so uh, each of the games. So they see him as being, you know, fully healed or they wouldn't be giving them the workload that they're giving them. Is that going to be enough to turn things around for San Fran, or is this going to be one of those years where, you know, the wrong dominoes fell at the wrong time? I mean, if any team can do it, this is the team. Um, they all bad a lot of injuries on the defensive side and maybe a few on the offensive side. Um, CMC, he's ramping up. I mean, it's one of those things. I'm, I didn't expect him to be in CMC game one or two. That's right. usually like a four-week ramp-up type of thing. Yeah, he's getting a full complement of carries, but you still got to get into game shape. You know, right. you can be, you can, you can flip all the basically. Yeah, you can flip all the tires you want, do all the sprints you want, but it's ain't nothing like playing the actual game itself. Um, but this is one of those sneaky teams where you don't want them to get in. Yes, one thing they're at the top and they're division leader, and they got the bye week and all that. But if you are strong, you know, one of the higher seeds, you would hate to face these guys in a wild card, right? Because they're not your typical wild card team. Um, but I'm not surprised by the loss because this is a division game. And these are the games that usually split anyway from year to year. They beat them one time. They beat them one time. Same thing for the Rams. Well, sometimes the Rams. Cardinals, too. Even the teams that have the lower record will somehow find a way to beat you because they know you. Um but again, I think they have enough to crawl into the playoffs. But this is a team I wouldn't want to face early on as a wild card. Yeah, for me, um, I think we can all agree that nothing's gone right for the Niners this year. A lot of injuries on both sides of the ball, especially star power on both sides of the ball. They've lost a lot of games in the second half this year they haven't been able to finish but despite all those things that have gone wrong they're only a game back with seven games left like they control their own destiny and so like if i'm if i'm their coach i literally if i'm shanahan i'd literally tell guys look this could have not gone worse for us this year we're right there our season starts now Let's go. We know who we are. And so, and they can even feel free to record me saying that because, you know, um, no additional charge. Uh, but I think that, I think that it'll really, there is still the team to be in the NFC West. They're only a game back. It's, it, there's a lot of football to be played. Let's move on over to college ball. Georgia beats Tennessee 31 to 17. 
now Georgia and Tennessee are both currently uh, in the top 10 as far as the uh, college rankings, excuse me, in the top 12. Uh, Tennessee is at 11, Georgia's at 10, both at an eight and two record um, as of this evening. So it's looking like some of the bigger name teams are going to end up being pushed out by some teams that are behind them but have a shot at winning their uh, conference, which gives you an automatic in. So it'll be interesting to see how the, the rankings and everything end up playing out. But this game in particular, how did you, get, how did you guys feel about um, the outcome of this game? Did you think it would be this close? Did you think that this was um, – another game where either team kind of had what well, I would say there was no edge or were you leaning the way that it went? So I think for me, um, Georgia is really hard to figure out because they're starting to feel the effects of losing all those defensive players that went to the NFL. The defense isn't its usual dominant self. And on the offside, on the offensive side of the ball, they don't really have – electric wide receivers and they lost Brock Bowers their all world tight end they also lost a monster split end in Darnell Washington who were two mismatches that they didn't have uh, good luck covering either one of those guys in the open field um, so without those they and they're not able to run the ball like I expected ETN to be able to have a much bigger impact than he has he's capable of it but they haven't been able to do that and then look at the inconsistency of how Georgia's played. They played a mediocre first half against Clemson, then played with their pants on fire and just crushed them in the second half, right? They go to Tuscaloosa. They lay an egg in the first half. Then in the second half, they look like the best team in college football history. They struggled against Kentucky. We're lucky to escape that. They laid an egg against Ole Miss. They fell behind 10-0 against Tennessee before a 31-7 run. I will say that they're playing a lot better in the second half than they do in the first half. But if you can figure out Georgia, I'd love to know for both betting purposes and just to cover them. Cause I don't think anybody knows what they're, they're going to get. And that includes Kirby smart. Yeah. I'm going to just echo the same. Uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, a few weeks ago we were saying Georgia was the best team in college football, right? Um, but then again, like BK said, they go out there and they'll lay down against certain teams. Kind of remind me of the 49ers. You know what I mean? Sometimes you play up, you will spank a team like the Eagles, and then you turn around and lose to the Seahawks. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things. And Georgia is pretty much running that same race. Um, I wasn't surprised at all. I didn't think Tennessee would be anywhere in this game, honestly. Um, yeah, they had a good record. They're playing pretty good football, but I think there's levels, tiers, and Tennessee is not a top tier ACC team. I mean, kudos from kudos on them for how they've been playing thus far this year. Uh, have a, a superior running back, uh, but nah, this is Georgia. Colorado versus Utah. The Buffs beat Utah forty nine to twenty four. And Colorado is now one of those teams that aren't ranked in the top 12 currently, but based on the uh, all the Power Five conferences having their champion represent, Colorado actually holds their future in their hands by the way of winning the Big 12 and getting a shot at going to the show. So some of the teams that are currently ranked within the top 12 they may end up taking a back seat or they would have to take a back seat to a conference champion. Um, so whoever doesn't get to the SEC championship game, for instance, out of like an Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, like it's probably only going to be three SEC teams that make the uh, playoffs so everything is going to kind of work towards how the SEC winds up as far as their representatives are concerned. But teams like Colorado, um, 
they can make it in and not even have to be in the top 12. I'm trying to think of a couple other teams. I, I don't know at this point, even it well, I guess if Army finishes undefeated and they do still have to play Notre Dame, that theoretically could get them to the top 12 because Notre Dame is number six now. Uh, but for the for all intents and purposes. You say number six? Yeah, Notre Dame is number six now. Okay. Yeah. I said Army. For, for some reason, I thought you said Army number six. I'm like, hold on. No, 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 no. Army is 19. So they aren't going to be able to work. Even though they're undefeated, they aren't going to be able to work their way up to 12. Um, unless, again, if you're undefeated and you beat number six, that kind of has to, in my humble opinion, gives you some consideration over teams like um, Ole Miss at um, number nine, eight and two, Georgia number 10, eight and two, uh, Tennessee number 11, eight and two. Uh, you would have one of the better wins beating a, a, a number number six overall team and being undefeated yourself. I'll say this, if 12 teams get the opportunity, and this is also all about what could happen, but if 12 teams get the opportunity to show that they could win a championship and you leave out one of only possibly two teams that's undefeated, then what are we doing? Um, at that point, it's kind of like, so no matter, we can go top 20, and you'll figure a way to keep out somebody that you don't like their name, even if they're undefeated and beat a top-ranked team. But so first of all, we know that the committee is all about money, and there's no way they're going to leave out Georgia or <laughs> Alabama or an Ole Miss for Army. But I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i just make this real simple. There's three teams that are undefeated. Oregon, who's going to stay undefeated, at least until they play in the Big Ten title game, then all bets are off there. But – Indiana, who's going to take their first L this week against the Buckeyes, um, that's going to be a problem for the Hoosiers. Great season, Cinderella story. The shoe falls off this Saturday at the shoe. And then Army, um, everything that you said makes sense, except for we're forgetting one thing. Notre Dame is going to pound them. So... We'll be down to one. We're, we're, talking about, we're talking about what ifs. If, if if they won, if they beat Notre Dame at number six, with the prevalent thought process being that they're going to get pounded, I, I think that they deserve a shot at the dance. Hey, BK was talking jump about Notre Dame. What, what he was saying, they, they lost to Northern Illinois or something. He's talking trash about them. If, if they, the same if they, they lose to Northern yeah, Illinois, they can lose the Army. And rightfully so. You lose to Northern Illinois as a 30-point favorite at home. What do you think going to be against Army? What do you think that spread is going to be? Uh, it's 15 and a half right now. Ooh. Hey, don't sleep on your servicemen, okay? But, <laughs> but you saw – granted, it took five turnovers. But you saw what Notre Dame did to Nick Navy. Yeah. That thing was over in the first half. So, you know – Ain't no disrespect. I, but What's that? give me the Army over the Navy. Army is better this year than Navy. And remember I talk about teams that lose their first game and how it impacts them. Iowa State dropped back to back. BYU, they lost their first game. Now they have a tough one against the Sun Devils, who, by the way, are a cover machine. That's probably going to be lost number two in a row. They just look tired now. But then – Look at Navy, right? They were undefeated playing Notre Dame. They were all excited. They got pasted by five touchdowns. Wait, think- wait. Okay, move on. Get to the point. You don't have to give all the, that detail, okay? All okay. I'm saying is, is that you're going to see – Navy took an L. And what else happened? <laughs> yes. Army <laughs> is in trouble. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. I'll put you like this. Um, of course, if I'm betting money, I'm going Notre Dame. But this wing T triple option, all this kind of it's it's a hard offense to figure out in a couple of days. Um if you're not uh patient and you're not uh um disciplined, it could be a long day because they're gonna control the clock. It's three yards in a cloud of dust all day game, all game long. 
three yards, three yards, four yards, three yards, four yards, boom, 20. Boom, 25. Three yards, three yards, two yards, three yards, 20. It's like one of those things. Like as soon as you, you get undisciplined, somebody breaks one. Um, let's just hope Notre Dame has the patience and not turn the ball over to win this game because you can it's kind of boring three cars and you know three yards and a cloud does all game long. It helps they've already seen Navy though. So they've already had one shot at seeing the same setup. Right, but that Army quarterback is pretty good. He is. So what do y'all think about Colorado's chance to run the table? Man, look at man. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> hey, I am. Listen, man. It's crazy. I I watch. I think every Colorado game since Dion been there. Um, this is like who I tune into. I've been watching this. I'm proud of what he's done. He has overachieved thus far. Um, everyone. It's so quiet now. You don't hear nothing anymore. It was, the noise was extremely loud before the season started. See, I told you. I told you they can't do nothing. No, they're not going to do this. They're not going to win this many games. Da, da, da. Man, the odds makers, if you took the over, <laughs> congratulations on the wins. Um, but this team is kind of clicking. They're kind of clicking. That offensive line is protected. That was the, the Achilles here last year. Trudeau was taking way too many hits. So the offensive line is doing a lot better. You know, they had a whole haul came in out of the portal. Um they're actually getting a little bit of pressure um, on the defense because that was the Achilles heel, both lines. Defensive line was getting pushed. Oakland's line getting pushed all last year. So um, I, I just think they're a wild card. I don't think they're going to win at all. But it's just good. It's good TV, and it's just good for the game to see them be able to even get in the playoff in only Dion's second year with this program. This is – I mean, he's already coach of the year at this point, in my opinion. And there's some good candidates out there. Yeah, so I don't know that I'm going to go that far. But what I will say is um, I, I will say that Colorado, I think, is should be the favorite to win the Big 12. There's four teams in contention themselves, Arizona State, um, Iowa State and BYU. BYU can't score. Iowa State can't score. Um, they they're better defensive teams. Um, Arizona State's gotten hot, but I think Colorado is the most complete team. Um, but if they make the playoffs, that's going to definitely ratchet up the ratings for sure. Oregon sneaks past Wisconsin 16 to 13. And I look at Wisconsin as one of those always, I won't say always, normally good, not great, but any given week can be any given team. Did Oregon just kind of sleepwalk into this game? Or are we looking at the middle of the Big 20, as it currently stands, uh, being pretty competitive against the upper echelon teams in college and in the Big 10. I'll be real quick on this. I think it was, you know, Oregon's played a few clunkers this year, right? Boise State, who's been better than advertised, or we thought. Idaho, which was just one of those weird games and they squeaked by the Buckeyes. Madison's a tough place to play. Camp Randall, really tough to play, especially later in the day. And the travel kind of got him. It's that Big Ten schedule where you go back and forth, West Coast. I think the time zone thing caught up with them with all their travel. Um, and Wisconsin does play good defense. Their offense is something else. But I think it's just one of those games, and it's one of those games that teams looking to win a title have to survive, and they did. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to second everything you said. Um, this just was a game. It seemed like this is a, a, a great coaching um, by Wisconsin. Um, it's like whatever Oregon had, they were there, you know, waiting on it. 
And so this is one of those tight, tough games. And to be great in this league, these are the games you got to win. I understand. By the, way, Vander, by the way, Vander, the coaching was so good for Wisconsin, they fired their OC after the game. <laughs> he didn't do it quite enough. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but it wasn't the defense's fault. That's right. Not true. Right. So, but I mean, I mean, let's, I mean, how many losses does Wisconsin have? A good bit. So for them to even be in this game, I thought it was, you know, good. What the spread, you know what the spread was off the top in this game going into it? 14. Okay. There you go. Sheesh. <laughs> Wisconsin won some people a couple of coins. Okay. Uh, South Carolina beats Mizzou. Um, this is an interesting scenario because I feel like Beamer is one of the only coaches – to go from being on a hot seat to being on a semi-throne. Um, I think he's bought himself some time. Carolina, I believe, is is highly ranked as they have been in quite some time. How are we feeling about, you know, Carolina? How are we feeling about Mizzou? That this game ended up being 34-30. Obviously, neither one of them are going to get into the SEC championship, but they'll have a, a pretty decent bowl. Carolina right now ranked at 19. There are too many teams in the SEC um, that would have to take an L for them to sneak past teams in their own conference. But what do we think about this particular team, um, and does it have any bearing on what we could see going into next year, or is this going to be a – one hit one. Hey, not bad for a non football school, right? Um, but uh they decent. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. But I mean this team is it's crazy, right? Because this team is like two losses away from really stirring the pot. We seen them the LSU game they should have had, and I believe the Alabama game should have yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they so that would have had them at a record of you know losing just one game, like that would have been insane to have them in the in the midst of all this. But that being said, I think he not only he bought himself for more time, but this team's only gonna get better. This is a young team. Their quarterback is young. Uh these bookends they got, you know, that defense, a lot of young players on that side of the ball. Um and I, I think they're gonna do well for a few years to come. I think it's kind of a coming out party uh for the young uh quarterback out of Florence. Um, Sellers. Yeah, he threw five touchdown passes, right? Like, that's insane. You know what I'm saying? Coming from him, known as a runner, really wasn't passing that well this year, but he, he kind of tapped in in that second half, and they 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 roared back. So, no, nah, I, I think this is going to be a decent football team for the next couple of years. Yeah, um, I'm going to start with the Missouri angle since I know you asked about Missouri too. Um, I don't know how that team was still ranked. Like, I don't think they played a good game in five weeks. Like, I I, I still like, anyway, um, give Carolina a lot of credit. You know, having lived here now a decade, I've learned watching their games, it's never easy. Um, and they turned what should have been a pretty routine victory into a uh, electric cardiac finish. Um, so obviously they have a bye this week against Wofford. So they'll be eight and three playing Clemson to close the season. Um, but I love the job Beamer's done. You know, to your point, Zay, he was on the hot seat, I think, before the season started. This team's been terrific. To Vander's point, it could have even been more of a special season, kind of beat themselves in a couple games that should have been wins, should be 10-1 and one heading to the Clemson game, um, and, they, and they'd be in the top 10 uh, for sure, um, especially with wins over Bama um, and LSU. Mm -hmm. But look, the future is bright. They have a terrific defense. It's only going to get better. They have a great quarterback. And I, 
I normally don't say these kind of things about coaches, but it's really hard to not like Beamer. It's really hard to not like him. He is such a great person. His energy, the culture he's created, the job he's done. That man doesn't get enough credit for what he's done. And I'm glad that he's bought himself probably now another two seasons where he doesn't have to worry about his job because he's a terrific fit. Let's go through these rankings right quick. And um, I just want you guys to tell me if it's, just about right are there any glaring changes that you feel need to be made number one is oregon number two is ohio state number three is texas number four penn state number five indiana number six notre dame number seven alabama number eight miami number nine Ole miss 10 georgia 11 tennessee 12, Boise State, 13, SMU, 14, BYU, 15, Texas A&M, 16, Colorado, 17, Clemson, 18, Carolina, 19, Army, and 20, Tulane. Obviously, the top 12, and there'll be a couple of things that will happen between now and the end of the season that will greatly affect that, but anyone – just in a spot that they have no reason that they should be in, whether that's too high or too low in your opinion, or are we letting sleeping dogs lie until after the conference championships? And then that's when you really kind of want to see what the committee has to say. Um, BK, why don't you start us out? Yeah, I just, I know that we have to talk about this, um, but I think it's much ado about nothing. It'll settle, it'll settle itself. A lot of these teams are going to play head-to-head. -head. Mm. We're going to find out what Indiana does this week against Ohio State when they play their first meaningful game of the season. We'll find about Army when they play their first meaningful game of the season. You know, So it's all going to shake out. Um, I know Miami's probably sitting there scratching its head at eight that it only has one loss and is at eight. But in reality, we all know they should have three losses. So – People recognize that they are a fraud and they're rated appropriately. So I think they're lucky. They should be thinking they're lucky stars to be at eight. Amen. Um, but I did tell you about Notre Dame, right? I told you yeah. they're gonna find it, they're gonna creep all the way up. Now they're sitting in a spot, you know they good. There's no way they're not getting this thing. Uh for me, Boise State. Um SMU's behind Boise State, right? You said SMU's at 13. Yeah, one spot behind them, 12 and 13, both they nine and one. They, they can't beat the pony. It's head to head, the pony will run over that Bronco. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, Boise State, I just think, is a team of circumstance. Uh, they I beat the SMU winning the ACC, though. So, I mean, that'll kind of work itself out. Yeah, that, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. So, I think what that's the one thing. And you remember? Uh, is they still in Mountain West or what is it now? So, so they're, they're not in the Power Five. I thought they moved for some reason. No, nope, oh, they would be a group of five. Were, were the, I, I think they're about to move to the Pac-12 or something. I, I saw something about them moving. I thought they had already moved. Uh, Pac-12. Okay, so the Pac-12 was trying to bring in a few more teams and still remain a conference. I wonder if they'll still be considered as a Power 5 conference. Yes. Based on what they did before, even though the teams that are there now, you know, I kind of have to see how that goes uh, in the future. But any uh, teams – any, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. Any, any teams that, that are just kind of glaringly out of place for you? Mm, I'm, I'm not mad at how everything else is laid. I wish SMU could be in that 12 spot. But like you said, it should work in its way out as far as ACC championship is concerned. Um, but as far as everybody else, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, Army. Put Army. Army should be up there somewhere, right? No, nah, I'm just playing. No, nah, they, 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 they don't need those. Right now. They're going to yeah, get their dose this weekend. If you ask they, they should be number two because they're undefeated. <laughs> but now I will say this. You were speaking to Notre Dame. Yeah. I mean, Notre Dame is appropriately placed. You got Alabama behind them with two losses. They're 9-1. and one. 
Uh, Miami is behind them at nine and one, and we're saying they're one of the most fraudulent nine and one teams we've seen. I mean, Notre Dame fell asleep at the wheel one game. Their other games, they've been pretty good. Um, you got a two loss Georgia, a two loss Tennessee. And then you got Boise State, SMU, BYU, all at nine and one. I mean, that's a, a, a pretty. And BYU good. would have to play Colorado, right? Well, well it, it depends. Um, I believe it would end up being BYU and Colorado in the Big 12 championship. But, sure. Okay. Um, so I think you're going to work well. I think the thing that bothers me is the bottom end of this, to Vander's point. Not only would I have SMU jump Boise State, but I would have them jump Tennessee too. On a neutral field, Tennessee is not beating the Mustangs. That's not happening. So, um, in fact, SMU, well, no, because the public would favor Tennessee because of the name brand. But anyone who's watched the games would tell you, SMU is the better team. They should be up bo- above both of those teams. I- I'm actually looking forward to matchups like that if these teams don't make the playoffs. like I- I'm as interested in some of the non-playoff bowl game matchups, the way they can kind of work out, so that teams that weren't quite given the I- – I don't want to use the term respect, but weren't quite given – the go ahead, if you will, in comparison to others, having an opportunity to go against some of these teams that were, you know, thought highly of, but just didn't make, um, make it shake based on, again, the power five conferences all having a spot at the table. Um, So that means somebody from the PAC 12 is going to get a spot. Somebody from the big 12 is going to get a spot. Somebody from the ACC is going to get a spot, even though none of them are highly ranked right now. A lot of them are ranked behind several other schools, but at the end of the day, the top five is going to be whoever won them championships, and then it'll kind of flush out from there. Notre Dame won't have an opportunity to win a championship, but if they can beat the uh, undefeated Army and they were already 9-1 and one, and they're already top six, their worst-case scenario is probably being pushed back to like 10 after you get some of those teams behind them that won championships to be put up there. So that's kind of what I am looking at as far as the lay of the land right now for the college football playoffs. We will definitely talk more about this in the coming weeks because um, the picture is going to become a whole lot clearer over the next couple of weeks. Some teams that were one loss teams and that's really the only thing that kept them in and won't have that claim anymore. Uh, Some of the teams that, possibly were undefeated, will no longer be undefeated, whether that be Oregon, Indy, or Army. And we'll talk about it again on next week. Did you guys have anything that you wanted to put out there to the good people before we wrap it up for the evening? I'm surprised we didn't mention this one thing. The firing in New York with the Jets, the GM. I know when that came across your ticker, you was ticklish. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna be so, honest with you. It's it's par for the course. Um we did everything that you said we should do to be successful. We brought in I I, I opened up and, and this is this is Zay the owner. Uh I opened up my wallet. We got the, the, the quote-unquote best guys that were available, and our record is the same as the Patriots. To, to his defense, though, he drafted some really good talent. I've seen I've seen GMs do a whole lot worse, but you get the likes of a Sauce Gardner, Quentin Williams, or whatever, a Brees Hall, um, a Garrett Wilson. Like He bought some, some pretty good talent in the building, so – I'm gonna say he did do decent. I mean, I guess the 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 one the biggest elephant in the room, of course, is Aaron Rodgers. But as far as a lot of other pieces around the board, he didn't do that. I've seen a lot worse. I think I think there's two things that fall on him, right? The hiring of Robert Sala, right, who just is not a competent NFL head coach. Um 
And then obviously bringing in A-Fraud, right? A-Fraud should already be retired. The guy hasn't done anything meaningful. I don't care about his regular season MVPs. When you talk about his cachet and his history, no one cares. It's about what did you do in the postseason? He's got two wins since 2017. He has one Super Bowl win a million years ago. Feels like I was a kid back then. So, you know, he needs to retire. I don't think, to Vander's point, I think that the GM did a better job than he's getting credit for. But at the end of the day, the owner can't fire himself. So someone's got to take the fall. And they've been literally fired everybody else. So the only person left to fire is him. But no matter who you bring in there, it's still not changing the culture because your owner is an idiot. <laughs> that, my friends, is the truth. Make sure you catch up with us. Uh, it's early in the week. we got a couple of more shows to go uh, tomorrow. Make sure you check out the Fantasy Football Show. The day after that, we'll have the flagship Gospel Sports Truth Podcast where we tackle just about everything sports, and we put a few bucks in your pocket because BK wins. Wraps it up for us today. Again, make sure you tell the truth. And nothing but the truth. All right, y'all. Later, y'all.